So when you're analyzing an NMR spectrum, one of the first things you should do with your chemical formula is to calculate your units of unsaturation. We saw this formula last semester, and the formula is U is equal to 2C plus 2 plus N minus H minus X, all divided by 2. When you calculate your units of unsaturation, one unit of unsaturation is equal to one pi bond or one ring being present in your structure. So if we look at an example, C6H14O. When we calculate our units of unsaturation, we're going to plug in for our six carbons and our 14 hydrogens, and when we do the calculation, we get zero. Notice that the oxygen does not factor into this equation at all. If we look at a second example, C6H13NO, as I plug into this equation, two times my six carbons plus two plus my one nitrogen minus my 13 hydrogens all divided by two, I get an unsaturation of one. That means that I have one ring or one pi bond in the structure. So you should also be able to look at a structure and know the number of units of unsaturations you have. This is going to provide you a check when you're analyzing an NMR spectrum as to whether or not your structure meets the chemical formula. One of the ways that you can check that is by looking at the units of unsaturation in your structures. So here we have one ring in this molecule, so our U will be one. In this case, this molecule has one pi bond, our U is one. In this molecule, we have one pi bond, our U is one. In this molecule here, remember that benzene represents four units of unsaturation, three from the double bonds, one because it's a ring, so this structure has five units of unsaturation. And this structure here with two benzene rings and one carbonyl has a total of nine units of unsaturation. So as we begin our discussion on how to analyze an NMR spectrum, there's four things that you're going to consider when analyzing your proton NMR spectrum. Number one, the number of signals in your NMR spectrum. This will represent the number of unique hydrogens that you have in your structure. Number two is the integration. This represents the number of hydrogens that are accounted for in a signal in your spectrum. Number three is the chemical shift. So where between zero and 12 will the peak for your protons fall? And number four is the multiplicity. This has to do with how many lines are in the signal, and this is going to tell us about the protons on the neighboring carbon. In this video, we're going to look at the first two ways that we will be analyzing an NMR spectrum. We're going to be working to understand the number of signals in our NMR spectrum. This is going to mean the number of unique types of protons that we have. We're also going to be working to understand the integrations for our peaks. That's going to mean the number of protons that are represented by the signals that we see. So here's an example of a molecule. We have one bromoethane. The first thing I'm going to do for this structure is I'm going to draw the protons in. So I have two protons at that carbon, and I have three protons at this carbon. So I have pr two protons at this carbon, and I have three protons at this carbon. When I have two protons, like the protons that I see here, I will generally expect these two protons that are bonded to the same carbon to show up in the same signal in my NMR spectrum. Those protons can be differentiated when we have stereocenters in our molecule, and we might talk about that a little bit later on. So these two protons on this carbon are going to be one signal, and the three protons at this carbon are going to be a second signal. So overall, I'm going to expect that there will be two signals, two signals in my NMR spectrum, where the integration for the signal for these protons is going to be equal to two, because I have two protons that are chemically equivalent that will be accounted for in the same signal in my NMR spectrum. And for these three protons, the integration that I would expect for this signal will be three, because I have three protons that are in an identical environment.
When I look at the hydrogens that I see in this structure, I have four methyl groups bonded to a carbon. So I have three hydrogens there, and there, and there, and there. I have a total of 12 hydrogens in this molecule. But in this case, I have three hydrogens that are bonded to a carbon. That's bonded to a carbon bonded to three other methyl groups. At this position, I have three hydrogens bonded to a carbon. That's bonded to a carbon with three methyl groups. Same there, same there. So all of the hydrogens in this structure are in an identical environment. So I would expect that there would be one signal in this NMR and it's going to account for my 12 protons, but because there's only one signal in this spectrum, all of my protons will be accounted for in that signal and I probably won't have an integration given to me because there's nothing to compare the ratio under that peak to the ratio under any other peaks in my spectrum. If I look at this molecule here, I have one, two, three types of hydrogens that I will see in the structure. There you see the hydrogens that will be accounted for in my structure. At this position, I have three hydrogens that are bonded to a carbon that's also bonded to the carbon of a carbonyl. At this position, I have two hydrogens that are bonded to a carbon that's also bonded to an oxygen and another carbon. At this position, I have three hydrogens that are bonded to a carbon that's bonded to a carbon with two hydrogens and an oxygen. So I have three unique environments for my protons so that in this spectrum, I'm going to expect to see a total of three signals. The protons here in pink, their signal will represent an integration of three. For the protons here in green, their signal will have an integration of two. And for the protons here in blue, their signal will have an integration of three. So I have a total of eight protons in this molecule and I will see three signals. The ratio for the areas under the peaks for all of these signals will be three to two to three. So if I look at this structure, as I fill the hydrogens in for this structure, I have a methyl group here where I have three hydrogens that are bonded to a carbon, where the carbon is also bonded to a hydrogen and two other methyl groups. This carbon has three hydrogens that are bonded to a carbon, that are bonded to a carbon with a hydrogen, and two methyls. For this carbon here, I also have three hydrogens bonded to a carbon that's bonded to a carbon with two methyls and a hydrogen. So all three of my pink methyl groups represent one type of hydrogen where this signal will integrate to nine. At this position here, I have one hydrogen. This hydrogen is bonded to a carbon that's bonded to three other carbons. So this hydrogen is in a unique environment. This represents my second type of hydrogen and its signal will have an integration for one. So that in the spectrum for this molecule, the peak that represents these pink hydrogens will have an area under its curve that is nine times greater than the signal that represents this one hydrogen. Overall, we will see two signals in our NMR for this molecule. Go ahead and take a look at this molecule. How many signals would you expect to see in the NMR spectrum for this molecule? Pause the video and figure it out. Overall, we will have three types of hydrogen in the spectrum for this molecule, and that will give rise to three signals. As I look at each of the signals, first for my protons in blue, I have a hydrogen that's bonded to a carbon that's bonded to a carbon with two hydrogens and an oxygen. This is going to be my first unique environment. All three of these hydrogens are in an identical environment so that the signal for these hydrogens will have an integration of three. For my green hydrogens, I have a hydrogen that's bonded to a carbon that's bonded to an oxygen and a carbon with three hydrogens. 
This proton and this proton are in identical environments, so they will be the same, they will be accounted for in the same signal, and the integration for their signal will account for the two protons. And finally, my orange protons, this is a tert-butyl group in my structure, where I have nine equivalent protons. In each case, I'll have a hydrogen that's bonded to a carbon, that's bonded to a carbon with two methyl groups and an oxygen, and I have that same bonding pattern for each of the hydrogens in this structure. So overall, all nine of these hydrogens will be accounted for in this signal, and it will have an integration of nine. So that the ratio for the areas under the peaks for each of these signals will be nine to two to three. In the structure of n-pentane, how many different types of hydrogen will I have? The answer is three signals. In this structure, I'll have three different types of hydrogen that I will see accounted for in my NMR spectrum. These first methyl protons represent a case where I have a hydrogen bonded to a carbon that's bonded to two other hydrogens and this butyl group. I see that connectivity pattern for each of the purple hydrogens on this side of the structure. I see that same connectivity pattern for the purple hydrogens on this side of the structure. Overall, the signal that accounts for those protons will have an integration of six. For my hydrogens in orange, they are both bonded to a carbon that's also bonded to a methyl and a propyl. I see that same bonding pattern here so that those orange protons are chemically equivalent, they will show up in the same signal, and they will have an integration of four. So for my green protons, each of these hydrogens see the same bonding pattern, and that is that they're bonded to a carbon that's bonded to two ethyl groups. And so in this case, their signal will have an integration of two. So that overall, for my three signals, I will have an integration of two, to four to six. Because the integration is a ratio for the areas under the peak, in my NMR spectrum, I will see that ratio as a one to two to three ratio that could be multiplied by any multiple in order to give the actual number of protons accounted for in the signals. Take a look at the structure of cyclohexane and determine the number of signals you would expect to see in the NMR. The answer is one. In the spectrum for cyclohexane, there would be one signal to account for all of the protons. In each case, all of my protons are in an identical environment. So the integration would account for the fact that there are 12 protons in that signal, but because there's no other protons in the structure of cyclohexane, there would likely not be any integration provided to you, and you would know that all protons in your structure were identical.